All right guys, so today I want to talk about the man in the gray suit. The tax man, the AKA Jaws, the AKA dude everybody's scared of in a kayak. So in this video, I want to talk about the top five things to never do with a shark from a kayak. So here we go. So bring it in, bring it in, bring it in real close. Okay, so we've all wondered about sharks and I get a lot of questions about sharks from kayaks. And the thing about sharks is they're ornery. They're probably the strongest thing on the beach. They're probably the best fight. They're the thing that can mess you up the worst and can take you on some wild rides that you probably should be uh, prepared for if you go on. So most of those days usually start something like this. And you know, you get out there and you get your bait and you get all settled in and you think you're gonna catch a king mackerel or something, you can handle it and all of a sudden, wham up. Like, sharks like bull sharks, black tip sharks, even the smaller ones can run off a lot of line real fast and some of them even jump. But you know that a lot of black tips, especially in deep water, will sky up and they'll do some really wild stuff, especially spinner sharks. They, they put on a display. So these guys are a lot stronger than you probably would give them credit for. They're probably pound for pound the strongest thing on the beach or the strongest thing out there. I don't know. I fought some pretty big fish recently and other than like a tarpon, the shark will blitz out and do some pretty good stuff. I don't know, Jack Cravel is pretty strong, but not, I think a black tip. A, a, a real spriteful, energetic black tip. We'll give you the run for your money. I tell you, I've had a lot of fun in there. Really good to eat. All right guys, so the number one thing to never do with a shark in a kayak is one, never handle a green shark, okay? There's a fine line between a shark being tired and a shark being almost dead, okay? so. You don't want to get up on them when they're green because they can bust out with lightning speed, just they're gone, all right? And the amount of line they can rip off is insane. And by the time you get spun around and, and handled, like, you know, that, that slack line could have gotten you, anything could happen. So just don't try to mess with them while they're green. Keep them out in front, let them work around, let them pull you around, and eventually you'll have him. But when you get him up to the boat and he starts doing this, or like just kind of bobbing, he's borderline starting to die. No, you're way past the uh, he's tired stage to like he's almost ready to die stage. So don't get him that way. Make sure you just get him, he's, he's ready to slow down. You can get up to him without him busting out again and you know he's not green anymore. All right, number two, okay? That would bring us into never fight or handle the shark broadside, okay? So like there's gonna come a time when he gets up close to your kayak and you've got him right there and you're like, all right, I can handle this thing. And you're like, well, I gotta do something with my rod. And you put your rod in the rod holder and you forget to loosen the drag. If he busts out, that kayak's going over, okay? Cause he's gonna go down and out. And that's about how they go, down and out or down in this way. And when that happens, the line's gonna go underneath your boat, kayak's going over. So never fight a big fish broadside unless you have a really loose drag and you're really good at riding the horse, okay? And when I mean riding the horse, like you've got a good center of gravity to where it's like this. You got him, like the kayak's not flipping. But if you do this, it's all she wrote, guys. You're going swimming with the big shark, the big Tex man, the AKA Jaws, all right? So just keep that in mind. Just stay north and south with the fish. Make sure he's in front of you and then work accordingly. Always keep your rod tip, uh, always keep your rod tip towards the front of the kayak and that way he's fighting the nose of the kayak instead of the side of the kayak works a lot better. All right, so number three. Okay, number three big thing is make sure you don't have any slack line on the fish. Okay, so like you might hook the fish and you're like, I got him, I got him. 
well, where'd the line go? Well, when it goes slack line, okay, there's two things that can happen here. One, he jumped and you got slack line. Or two, he's coming straight back towards you and about to go right past you at like 40 miles an hour. And you got a lot of slack line. So what does slack braided fishing line do? It cuts whatever it touches, right? So when he gets to the end of that line doing about 40 miles an hour or whatever crazy speed these things got, that braided fish line is gonna rip through whatever it gets to. It can cut a hole in your kayak, it cut a hole in your rod, it can cut a hole in your fingers, your gloves, your, I got a water bottle with a braided scar right across it. You see one of my rods, the handle of one of my big rods is actually cut almost to the bone core of the ugly stick from a tarpon jumping in the braided line getting on top and wrapped up and when he took off it sawed through the rod and that my thumb was right there and I just happened to get my thumb out of it. My point is is that when you have slack line it gets wrapped around stuff and you're in a kayak in a small little enclosure with a lot of things that you get caught on and if it gets caught on you and the fish hits the other end it's just bad news. <laughs> it could get caught on your neck, caught on your fingers, it could cut a finger off. Stay, make sure you don't have any slack line. I'm just saying. Point taken. Okay, perfect example is the episode where the shark pulled me backwards. Slack line, I got underneath my rudder and the shark happened to hit it right when it was wrapped in my rudder and pulled me backwards, cut my rudder. I had to go ashore. It was bad news. I had to, I had to loosen the line as best I could, flip the bail, flip the drag, and I was able to get out of it. Just FYI. All right, so the next one, guys, is don't put your hands by their mouth. This, this might seem like common sense, but I'm guilty of it, is you get him up there and you're like, oh, there's the hook, I got these pliers, I'm just gonna reach down there and just, just get it out. And that leads to you yanking on him, which your fingers are like this far from his teeth. And bull sharks don't even, don't even try it, guys. Black tips, you might can get away with it, and you know, sand sharks and stuff, you're cool. But bull sharks, let that sucker go. Cut the line. Forget him. Like he's as big as a kayak. Don't even try it. You get in there with him, he's gonna scuff you. He's gonna scuff you royally. But um, just reach down there. If you have, if you have, if you have barbless hooks with barbs or push down, you might be able to get it out. But if you don't, you're gonna have to cut the line. I y'all are probably gonna yell at me, but if you're using hooks that will rust out, it'll be gone in a few months. He's just gonna have some jewelry in his mouth because they're dangerous guys and remember like he may look like his head's over there but that head can turn around like half his body or so something crazy they're like acrobatic okay and their tail can break your hand if it's a big shark so just keep that in mind the tail's dangerous whatever he slaps he's gonna hurt and that mouth whatever he clamps down on is gone son you don't want to go to the emergency room. I don't even know if you go to the emergency room you might have to cauterize that junk so just keep in mind don't put your hands by their, their, their mouths or their tails. And that brings me to number five, okay? Do not, do not, do not, please do not bring a, one of these sharks in the kayak with you, okay? I know there's some rebel, there's some rebel renegades out there and you guys are gonna call me out, but I'm just gonna tell you this is how I roll. I put a little shark in my kayak one time, I almost had to jump out of that thing because these things are so lively when they hit the deck. They flip around, and they almost bite your legs. Like, it's just not cool, okay? And a big shark, you put him in there, his tail could break your hand, could, could break your foot, like his mouth will break your junk, whatever he clamps down on. They're super strong. They're just, they're like little robots or big robots. So just don't put him in the kayak and, uh, you know, it, I just, just take my advice on it. Like, if you got a big shark and you're not taking him home to eat, get rid of the line, cut the line right on the hook, or try your best to get the hook out of his mouth. But just make sure that you're doing it smart and wise, and the shark is not green because they're strong. And and just the bonus one right here, guys, don't do it in the dark. Me and Rob, true story, fought a bull shark under a three mile bridge for like two hours at two o'clock in the morning one summer, like a few summers ago, and he pulled me for like a mile. And I was fighting this thing on my knees, 50 pound braid, one of my offshore rods. I thought it was a tarpon for a minute, but two hours later it was a bull shark. Fought him to a stalemate, got him up to the kayak, and it was just teeth like this. And I said, he gone, I cut him loose. I like, like the, don't do it in the dark. Cause if that kayak would have rolled in the middle of the three mile bridge in the dark in the middle of summer, like, Nobody would have found us. Rob was out there frolicking with another shark, and it would have been bad juju. It was young and dumb, you know, and it's not a good story. So, 
Hope you guys like this, man. I want to put out my knowledge for you guys because I've been asked about sharks. They most of the time won't bother you. Sometimes they'll steal your fish. And usually if you paddle right towards them, they'll go the other way. And I've never really had a big problem with them even surfing. Knock on wood. And comment down below if you've had a close encounter with these guys. And that way we can all learn from each other. And I'll see you guys later. Yeah.